Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a magnetic rack for your drill bits and your router bits. Now I've been trying to get to this for a long time. My drill bits and router bits are accumulating and it's getting pretty messy. Um, and I really want to take better care of them, especially the more expensive bits that are in my shop. I don't want to really put these away in cases and drawers because that doesn't really work for me. I need some kind of a system by which I can easily store them and get access to them to make them visible in my shop, but to also house them in some kind of a nice storage rack. So I'm not going to make your traditional sort of router and drill bit rack. I'm going to use magnets instead, and I'll show you how I do that. To build this router and drill bit storage rack, I wanted to make sure that I had the right type of magnets so I went to a local tool dealer and I found these. <laughs> Sorry for the reflection. These are 18 inch magnetic strips. They come in sets of two. It's $10 for each pack. So that's what I'm going to use. I bought two sets of them. So I've got four strips all together. I'll have four shelves that are 18 inches. And it should hold a lot of router and drill bits when I'm done. The wood I'm using, Looks like this is yellow cedar, a leftover board that I had that I'm going to use for this rack. I wanted to go with a dovetail joint on this piece because I'm going to see this all the time from a profile view. I just want it to look a little nicer. Probably takes about the same amount of time as a box joint for me. The sides are 19 and a half. That's what I'm working with. Assuming this is the top, I'm going to go six inches down and mark it. So we got six inches and then every four inches after that, so I've marked my wood at the front of the cabinet. What I'm going to do now is take my protractor and now I'm going to mark the angle. This is the angle that I'm going to work with on my protractor. It's kind of arbitrary. And then just go down. Okay, so I've got that one marked. Now I'm going to mark my other side and what I'm going to do is take up the mark from the other piece. So now I'm satisfied with the angle of the grooves I'll be cutting and now it's time to set up to do that. So it looks like we've got it all lined up. It's a little 
trick that I do if you've got slightly loose fitting dovetails. I just shoot a couple of pin nails in so that I can keep it square. consider that cheating or not but the pin nails is just a couple of pin nails that I shoot on the top of each corner so top and bottom I guess you can call it and that's just to keep everything aligned while it's gluing up the pin nails don't really add any strength you know, the strength is in the joint obviously in the dovetail So there we have it. We'll let that glue up for a while. So just as a test fit, I can slide one of my shelves in to the rabbits that I cut and you can see that that 35 degree angle is just perfect. That will make it flush at the front. This is the front we're looking at now, straight across so that um, the shelf, which this will be the top of the shelf, we don't have any corner overhang or anything awkward going on. To complement the yellow cedar I used in the rack, I'm going to use this red cedar uh, for the front. First, I've got to plane these down. It's rough one side still. And I need this nice and smooth. So I flipped over the box and I'm just lining everything up so I can drill and countersink. I'm going to make this removable. So I'm going to mount my magnets on each shelf first before I put them in. I've got a couple of pieces of wood for spacers so that I can get everything even. I'm going to use these particle board screws. They've got the washer head just like pocket screws. So next I'm going to do the bottom piece. I'm going to glue it on. That will lock the bottom shelf in. 
and then for the rest of the shelves they will be locked in from the sides so what I have to be careful of is I only want glue on this section I don't want to glue the shelves in I only want glue a little bit on the edge here and here and on the bottom this ought to do it So now I've got the top and the bottom on. So I just need to figure out the angle of the side pieces here in the front and then we'll trim up the rest. Now I have another piece of red cedar. That is exactly the same width as the top plate, which is good because I can just line it up at the top and all I have to do is mark at the bottom so that I know where my taper goes to. So for this, I don't even have to draw a line really. I just have to mark where it needs to taper to. So I get it close to the line, but not right on the line allowing for the kerf. And we got that in and then I just get it so that it's not going to overcut and that should do it with the tapers, the tapered parts. I'm going to do the glue up soon, but I want to get the rest of my magnets in. So I'm going to do what I did with the first one. I'm just going to mark these parts so that I don't get them confused. Yeah, we'll do okay right there. That's all right. Let's put the rest of these in. Now again, I've mounted the back on with screws so that I can take these out. Once I finish the front, you can never remove them again from the front. But it will be easier to finish the front with these in place. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So now my glue up for the sides is clamped and I'm just waiting for this to do its thing. In the meantime, I want to get my trim pieces on for the other three shelves. Use smaller brads here. That actually works okay, nothing went through. Those uh, brad nails are shallow enough. All right, it's gonna work. 
back up pretty well. So you know when you order router bits online and they come in these little plastic containers, I always thought it's kind of a shame to just throw these out. I mean, once you have the bit out of the container and you're using it, you somehow usually lose the container somewhere along the way. But I always thought it was a good idea to keep these so you can protect your router bits. Usually when I have these stored in a drawer, I keep them inside their little cases because I don't want their bits to get dull. I don't want them to get damaged. But here's the cool thing with magnetic rack. You can actually put these on and uh, the magnetism is strong enough that it will still stick on the rack through these plastic containers. So if you want to label these little containers with a Sharpie and just stick them on the rack, you can do that. They will stick there just fine by themselves and stay protected. So that's the cool thing about um, using magnets as opposed to building a rack that's got drilled out holes. This is actually a lot more versatile, so it's pretty cool. Well, I did a little reorganization during the commercial break and uh, now I think I've got the router bits and the drill bits in the places that I want them. If you're wondering how secure this is, I'll show you right now. Don't hear anything. That's because nothing's falling out of the cabinet and these magnets are actually pretty strong. So you're not going to lose the bits, they're going to stay where you put them. You could definitely build this uh, with one species of wood and not two-tone like I did. And you don't need to do the dovetail joinery, you can skip that. You can either use like a simple rabbit joint to make the box or you can even use pocket holes on the top and the bottom. Because you're building a hood for the unit, you won't see the pocket holes from the top and you never see them on the bottom anyway. So build the box however you like. I like the look of the dovetails on the side myself and the two-tone, that's just me, it's a personal thing. But once you have the box constructed, it is really the same process regardless. This is going to last a good long time. I did quite a bit of sanding and it's pretty much shop ready. I don't think I'll put a finish on it, I typically don't put finishes on wood in my shop. Maybe down the road I'll put a coat of polyurethane on it, but for now, I'm going to leave the bare wood. I kind of like the look of the, uh, the raw cedar. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm really happy with how stable this is and how effective it is at helping me organize things. This is going to be a great addition to my workshop. Well that concludes building a magnetic rack for your router bits and your drill bits. If you want to buy me a beer, head on over to my Patreon page right here. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos on this side that you can watch. Have a safe and happy holiday, and we'll see you in 2019.